So what we'd like to do now is move into an exergy balance, not for a closed system, but for an open system. What happens when you have an open system? You can have mass transfer across the boundary. But we're going to write it for the simplest, just one in, one out. And when you need to adapt for a slightly more uh, challenging problem, if you have two ins and one out or whatever, one in and two outs, it's, you should be able to handle that slight adaptation. But steady state always. Let's write it for one in and one out. What's the equation look like? This. Okay, let's talk through it. What do we have here? The steady state. There's no accumulation or depletion of exergy in our system, in our control volume. What do we have here? That's, we just used that in an example problem. That's our exergy transfer with our heat transfer. They write it like that. This is, okay, what is this one? our exergy transfer with our work. Now, this work can become uh, mechanical uh, shaft work, like a rotating shaft. That's very common. You could also have electric energy in the form of the voltage and current going into the system, maybe resistive heating inside the system or something, or even a generator. So don't, it's, it can be generalized, and it was generalized in, um, Thermo 1 to include the electric power. But why is there a negative sign here? They're staying with the same convention, that it's out of our system, positive work out. And uh, is it, this is a one-to-one -one ratio. Remember, exergy is all about getting energy into the most useful form of, that, that we like in engineering, which is power or work. And so it's a one-to-one. -one. Where heat transfer, this is like a factor. This is a, a percentage, a factor less than 1%, or less than 100%. It's a, it's a fraction of the energy transfer by heat. But for work or pa mechanical power, it's a one-to-one. -one. It's like putting a 100% right there in front of it. Okay. Then we have our mass flow rate. Well, if it's steady state, one inlet, one outlet, then I don't need, to, you know, it just simplifies. And then we have our exergy flow and our exergy flow. So this is our uh, specific flow exergy coming in. This is our specific flow exergy exiting. Here's our general equation for our specific flow exergy. Notice H shows up, enthalpy. Just like when we had a control volume energy balance, H was there instead of U. And then we have T naught S minus S naught. There is no P naught term, is there? Not there. It's simpler. It's easier to use. And then you still have your specific uh, kinetic and potential energy terms coming. So hopefully this looks even easier for you. All right. Uh, would you like to derive this equation? and actually derive that. Let's do it. So uh, again, I'll emphasize, I try to make these derivations uh, where you can spend more time after hours in the textbook at home studying if you'd like or choose to. But what we do is you start off with a system that looks like this, where this part is inside of my control volume and this part's about ready to flow because it's in the pipe into my control volume and then after some time you end up with the system that's become distorted and it looks like that now I try not to overlay these but when I do overlay them they look like this and it gets a little more confusing but over the time period of interest some small amount of time delta T I wouldn't I would write it more like this DT after 0.1 second, 0.1 millisecond, something like that, it's now been formed and some flowed out of the pipe, and that's as far as it flowed out of the pipe, leaving this region. What is my control volume? That region. Right here is the boundary at which it comes in. This is the boundary at which it leaves. So that's probably the most confusing. Did you take fluids? Very similar derivation. Reynolds Transport Theorem. Any and every fluid mechanics book has it in it. Take a look. Hopefully it's reinforcing what you see in another class. All right. So we have this concept of time and then time at a small increment in the future.
Also, this is the same derivation used for enthalpy in Thermo 1. Same derivation. It's just now we're doing it for exergy. So we have our energy balance. It's only for a closed system, but it's getting squeezed, right? So this is our uh, exergy balance. Uh, did I say energy or exergy? I meant to say exergy balance at time t minus the, the um, current time, t plus dt minus the current time. So this will be the amount of heat transfer across the boundary times that 1 minus T0 over Tb of the boundary temperature minus delta Q of the control volume work coming out. You have some flow work and some flow work. This flow work is the exit pressure times the exit volume, how much was pushed out. This is the inlet pressure times the inlet volume, what was pushed in. And then you have uh, um, some boundary work that was, uh, well, that's already accounted for right here. The boundary work pushing, if there's a change in the total volume. The volume and the control volume is the same. It's just, is there a difference between the exiting volume and the inlet volume, where that would be non-zero? And then you have, for an exergy balance, a uh, possibility of some entropy uh, generation due to irreversibilities, which means with this negative sign, exergy destruction. Expand the two terms here. Note that it's steady state. So if it's steady state, neither the mass in the control volume is changing with time or the temperature pressure, hence the exergy of the fluid in the control volume is changing with time. It's not. They cancel. But what you have is uh, the exergy flowing out is different than the exergy flowing in. It could flow in hot and flow out cold, or it could flow in cold and flow out hot. So that's the difference. The amount of flowing in and the amount flowing out is the same. All right. Uh, these terms are just uh, um, regrouped a little bit right here. Um, you then say it's a steady state. Um, where did these two terms go? Over here. They pushed those over to this side. You're regrouping. It's, it's algebra at this point. Let me scroll down. And then you have this, the uh, uh, exergy plus PV minus P naught V. You expand out what this exergy is. It had this P naught V minus V naught term. But you have these terms from the flow work terms. Some of them cancel. The rest of them are combined with the U's to create H's. So um, how, am I, how do I describe that step? Algebra with some insightful combination to express it in terms of enthalpy. Then you say this is a new property. I'm going to call it the flow exergy. It's slightly different than the exergy for our closed system. You divide the whole equation by a small time step, delta t. This 0 by dt is still 0. You get this turns into a q dot. This turns into a w dot. This turns into an m dot. This turns into an m dot. This turns into a sigma dot. And that's it. I hate to say it, but how do you like that? So there's the equation as written, what we set out to derive. And here it is, how it's been derived. All right. So very rarely, and you can derive a more general equation, and here it is. So you could have some accumulation or depletion of exergy in the control volume. Rare. Not going to solve any homework problems with it and not going to have any exam problems with it. But if you do that, you have this sort of very interesting term because the volume of the control volume would expand and if it did expand but not get back to the original state like it would be in a steady state then uh, you would have to have this term which is analogous to what you had for the other closed system okay looks like I don't have time to solve another problem uh, I'll pick up there next time